For watching the station covering all of the DMV, this is DC News Now. Watch is in effect for the region as we head late tonight in through early tomorrow. One to three inches of rainfall is possible, some heaviest of which will fall into the overnights, then some mountain snow Monday into Tuesday. DC police are searching for a woman connected to an attempted kidnapping. We'll tell you where it happened and have the latest on that investigation. Plus, reactions keep pouring in following that announcement to potentially move the Wizards and the Caps to Alexandria, Virginia. Up ahead, the mixed reaction from locals. And some severe weather is expected in the DMV. Our Derek Bowen breaking down when you can expect to see precipitation in your area on this DMV first warn day. But we begin this 7 o'clock with a live look outside over the Capitol this morning, looking foggy and quite eerie, something out of a movie. So if you're going to be out on the roads today, beware of that. There's quite some fog outside. Good morning, everyone. Thanks for joining us on DC News Now. I'm Tosa Fakile. We'll get to those top stories in just a bit. But first, let's begin with Derek Bowen, who has answers for us on this DMV First Warn Day. Derek, things are quiet now, but there's a lot of activity in the weather today. So tell us what we're expecting. A lot of activity in the mix indeed, and that will occur especially towards this afternoon throughout this evening. Right now, things are relatively quiet. We do have some rain showers entering into the uh, western portions of Pennsylvania. Those are relatively light in nature and not really the bulk of the system that is coming our way. We have the systems from uh, both the west as well as the south coming in uh, through. We have a front frontal system that is going to be rolling in plus a coastal low. Uh, those two together is going to bring some uh, soaking rains th through the region. We're looking at temperatures currently into the 40s in the S, even some 30s out there. 34, in fact, into Woodstock, Luray. Moving over towards Kaiser at 37, 38 into Cumberland, uh, 42 in uh, Fredericksburg. Moving up to 43, Frederick Manassas, Leesburg this morning. Definitely seeing some cool spots this AM. That flood watch is in effect throughout most of the coastal regions as well as the, the tidal Potomac going up in towards DC as well in and around the Beltway all the way up north and south along the I-95 corridor. Uh, this is going to go for late tonight into early Monday with that rain shower activity coming on in. Now the rain showers will become more likely during the afternoon. Your brunch won't be a total washout, but we may see a sprinkling of showers early on, but by the time the afternoon really comes in, that's when we're going to start seeing more of that rain uh, uh, trickle up this way. There's those few light little showers that could occur early on. I think those will be uh, holding off for the most part. So if you're going to be out and about into the early morning hours, you won't really run into much in the way of rain. But this afternoon, for sure, be sure to have the umbrella with you and can continue to carry it uh, through the overnight. The heaviest of rain happens this evening and could could cause some flooding in and around the DMV. Uh, Derek, thank you for that important update. 702 and new this morning, DC police are looking for four suspects after a robbery in Northwest. They say it happened on the 4300 block of 15th Street. Very little details we have at this moment. We'll update you as we learn more from police. And police are also looking for the woman on your screen right now for an alleged attempt kidnapping Friday afternoon. Police say she tried to take a young child from a stroller on a metro bus near Southern Avenue in Southeast DC. Now there is a one $1,000 reward for information that leads to an arrest. Fairfax County detectives have arrested a suspect for the fifth time over a 102 day period for multiple crimes across the county. 22 year old and hell Halius was initially arrested on Tuesday for a spree of five burglaries in a 24 hour span. At the time of his arrest, he was found in possession of items detectives confirmed were stolen and then additional warrants were sent out for his arrest. Before those warrants were obtained, Galeas was released on bond. On Friday, detectives found him driving a Hyundai Sonata they say was stolen from the West Springfield Police District earlier that day. Galeas is facing multiple charges, including three counts of misdemeanor destruction of property. And a man is dead following an officer involved shooting in Stafford County. According to the county sheriff, deputies responded to a disturbance on Richmond Highway near Jason Lane. When they got there, they found a man with a rifle 
Deputies say they repeatedly told the man to drop the gun, but he didn't. That's when they, they say deputies shot him. He died on the scene. The deputies involved are now on routine administrative leave. And Pentagon City Mall is set to reopen today after a fire Saturday night. Arlington Fire and Emergency Services responded to the fire on the roof of the shopping center at about 7 last night. Fire officials say the smoke and fire appear to come from a malfunctioning appliance in the ductwork. People were evacuated from inside the mall as a precaution. There are no reports of injuries. Officials say the mall was closed for the rest of Saturday night because of that fire. A handful of restaurants outside the mall stayed open. We're told the fire marshal is investigating and all gates to the Naval Academy were closed due to an emergency situation at about two o'clock on Saturday afternoon. A spokesperson for the U.S. Naval Academy says they received multiple bomb threats and reports of suspicious packages on the Academy's grounds. The scene was cleared and the gates later reopened. And Metro Riders heads up 14 Metro bus lines here in the district as of this morning have now shifted to 24 hour service for some of their DC routes. Those buses will run about every 20 minutes between 9 p.m. and 7 a.m. For a complete list of the service changes, you can head to our website, dcnewsnow.com. And over to Virginia now, Prince William County will soon be home to the largest data center hub in the world. The Board of Supervisors voted four to three to approve the Digital Gateway Project. Leaders and neighbors debated during a public hearing for about 26 hours. The controversial plan will rezone more than 2,100 acres of land in the Gainesville area. Advocates are excited for this economic op opportunity. The project could bring, they say, more than an estimated $400 million in tax revenue to the county each year. But critics have concerns about the environmental and noise pollution, some even threatening to take the decision to court. 706 in Prince George's County State's Attorney is hoping some 2024 legislative bills will help them more effectively prosecute cases and make the county safer. She and Baltimore City State's Attorney announced their support for several upcoming bills that look to tackle juvenile crime. Now, the fact that these bills are coming up in Maryland's 2024 legislative session and the state's attorney supporting it shows that juvenile crime and dealing with it is top of mind. Some of the bills focus on how much consequences young violators face and for how long, including those under the age of 16. Thursday, PG County State's Attorney Ayesha Brave Boy and Baltimore City State's Attorney Ivan J. Bates threw their support behind five bills. The first bill would increase the probationary period of a misdemeanor from six months to two years in cases where a young person illegally wears or carries a gun or carjacks a person. That bill would also increase the probationary period of those found guilty of violent felonies from two years to four years max. And this bill also stands out because it says for any juvenile 15 years and nine months or older, the prosecutor's office will be given the chance to review and or prosecute any cases involving illegal guns or car theft with the right to seek the case be tried in adult court. A second bill would make sure a juvenile found not criminally responsible and or found not competent will be detained on their second or subsequent offense. You can find more details on all five bills the state's attorney supported on our website, dcnewsnow.com. As we get closer to winter, Prince George's County officials are reminding people to clear snow and ice from their sidewalks. The county requires snow and ice be removed within two days of it falling. After two days, the county will issue a $100 fine each day the sidewalk is not clear. Officials are focusing efforts on specific areas like near schools and apartment complexes. The county is also emphasizing snow removal along state highways, major roadways, and at public gatherings like churches. 708 and people living in Potomac Yard still sounding off, raising concerns about the potential new home for the Caps and Wizards and the ripple effects the move would have. They're wondering what their day to day life will be like if thousands of fans are coming to their neighborhood each night. Now, with some people excited that they might only have to walk a couple of blocks to watch the games, others say it's not worth the trouble it can cause on the roads. Northern Virginia Bureau reporter Max Marcilla breaks down both the excitement and concern over the potential move that some say has mixed reactions. For some people who live in Potomac Yard, the promise of a transformation of this land into a full-blown entertainment center is exciting. There's a reason why Virginia is scaling up so quickly. 
uh, and has been over the, the last five to 10 years. Josh Baroni has lived here for just a few months, but sees a future a few years from now where he can get cap season tickets. His optimism is not unique, but it certainly isn't unanimous. If you're talking to people about how they're going to live their daily lives, cars are really involved in that for a lot of people. Vida estimates that nearly 75,000 cars travel Route 1 and the GW Parkway in Alexandria each day, and traffic issues are a major holdup for people who drive these roads not to get to a game, but to get to school, work, and run errands. Mayor Justin Wilson calls what was proposed a transit arena with Metro playing a big role, but he admits right now the station isn't adequate. Baroni says this is a chance to turn this neighborhood into a more public transit friendly place. It actually would be really good for this area to move away from requiring cars uh, to get in and out and around Alexandria and move towards public transit instead. Meanwhile, neighbors tell us another major concern is parking, something Wilson says needs to be addressed. We're going to have to do a whole series of neighborhood protection kind of things. Now, neighbors also told DC News Now they want to see 24-hour residents-only parking spaces. Other concerns we heard surround the potential change to the character of that neighborhood. One person telling DC News Now they don't expect to stay there much longer if the plan goes through.